My name is Miloš and this is my friend Kuki. Uh, we are both part of 327, uh, that's an uh, R&D collective. And our goal is to stay up to date with Web3 technologies. So today we're gonna talk about that. And today we can start with the challenges that we ran into during the last couple of years while re researching and building in Web3. Many times we would go deep into specific ecosystems so that we would miss all the innovations that would happen in the other ecosystems. Secondly, uh, even though when we would like to enter new ecosystems, we didn't know where to start. We didn't know what is the current state of the tech or there, or where to watch, where to find useful informations. And finally, um, somewhat different situation is when we would go deep into specific technology, we would research it, build, trying to build something with it, and then we would realize it's too early for it. It's too early for its adoption. And we would move to something else. However, in the meantime, the initial technology would experience some changes, and it would become somewhat revolutionary. But we weren't watching at it anymore, and we would miss the opportunity to innovate um, and to utilize the fact that we were over there before it was popular. It happened to us many times with MMs, with ZK, um, etc., etc. Um, so, uh, to prevent these kinds of situations from happening, or at least to decrease its number, uh, we decided to uh, create a Web3 Tech Reader. Um, that's a tool, uh, and what we actually did is that we mapped as much as possible of Web3 technologies for this first version. We mapped technologies, uh, tools, uh, languages, frameworks, etc., etc. Uh, we divided them into the ecosystem, and we uh, visualized and arranged them using the radar metaphor. But let's see how it really looks in practice. Uh, the first thing you're greeted with is like a fine choice of different ecosystems. Uh, I know we're all here huge fans of EVM-based systems, but like if you want to fool around, I won't tell anyone. Uh, so inside each ecosystem, we give uh, some general information about it. Uh, which this guides us to uh, figure out if that ecosystem is the right fit for the Web3 product that we want to build. Um, we have some basic information here, but there's also the full report where we dive deeper into specific of each ecosystems. Um, and then, uh, of course, the highlight for each ecosystem is its technology radar. Uh, like Milos mentioned, we uh, take all of the technologies we find for a specific ecosystem, we put them into these tiny little blips, uh, and inside of each blip, like, let's say for Solidity, we have a brief description of it, a link where you can find more if you're interested, or, uh, and our opinion, of course. Um, and so, this is what we end up with. And we wanted to uh, have a better understanding of what's happening. So, like Milos mentioned, we have uh, different quadrants. So we have platforms, tools, techniques and protocols, and languages and frameworks. Uh, but on the other hand, we also have rings. Uh, those tell us uh, how close to mass adoption a certain technology is in the Web3 space. So the highlighted ring that you see, the SES ring, uh, that's for all those like new and exciting things that's, that have been popping up on Twitter, but that really haven't been fleshed out. Um, on the other hand, adopt ring is for those like things that are indispensable for any Web3 project. Um, and on the border, like far away, uh, is the whole ring. That's for um, those like things that you probably want to be careful with or that you should just totally ditch. Uh, for example, proof of work. Yay, give it up for the merge. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, of course, some of you may know this is like inspired by the great folks over at ThoughtWorks. And with this, um, we at 3327 have a better feel of what's happening in a specific ecosystem. We know what new things are popping up, what things are getting fleshed out, and what things are kind of maybe getting deprecated. Uh, so we use that to stay in, uh, stay in touch. 
uh, keep up to date without having to like scroll on Twitter all day. Uh, and it also helps us decide which technologies we might want to use for our next uh, Web3 project. So we're, we'll keep working on it because we use it all the time. Uh, but we also want to make it like a community effort, like to make it a, a project that's by the community for the community. And if you want to help us, uh, please reach out to us. You can reach us on Twitter and also uh, on the link below. Um, this is something that we want to make a space for uh, having a sense of this crazy and dynamic Web3 world that we're all building together. Yeah. I'll Thank you. just add one more thing that you can go on the link on the Twitter. You can check over there the current alpha version and in two weeks we're going to come up with a new one. How often do you plan to uh, update it? Is it a quarterly release? Yes, because we want to be thorough with each one. We want to really assess each technology. We want to do it quarterly. Um, that's the general idea. App you're building here, Dapper. Um, I'm curious, how do, you, how do you measure what is valuable and how do you measure that value and what is, gets closer to the center of the circle? So we m measure like how, how well adopted it is. Like if you think about stuff, uh, we have a huge team of developers inside our team, so we see our, their experience. It's our subjective opinion, but that's why we want the community to come in and uh, challenge those opinions and to see, like, really, okay, let, if we all band together, okay, let's really see what is good there and what's something that we might want to skip.